and he said, yeah, I'm so excited to be here. I borrowed my mother's car. And, um, and I said, does your mother know? And he said, well, no. <laughs> I was like, oh. <laughs> and how old are you, darling? <laughs> Fifteen. Oh. <laughs> Go away. <laughs> Go away. <laughs> because at that time, you know, I mean, like, ideally, you know, uh, but the reality was that that was in 1995, and if his parents had known, it would not have been possible for him to come. Now, he is now, you know, this is now how many years later, and he's an organizer, <laughs> and so he... Um, <laughs> He's still a part of, of the process. He's totally out to his family. <laughs> he just finished his master's degree, and um, you know, so and he's doing really fine. So at least he never really got arrested for stealing his mother's car. <laughs> I guess it could have been worse. It could have been somebody else's car, yeah, you know. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, I was like, oh. So I, I, you know, so so there there may be some of that. We certainly don't encourage it, right. but we understand that sometimes kids can't be out. That um, we have one of the kids in our mentoring program that she's 18 now, um, but when she was 14, she came out to her school social worker, and the school social worker told her she had to tell her parents, and she said, I'm not telling my parents. My parents will not accept it, and the school social worker thought she was making too much of it, so she called her parents, oh and, um, and the parents put her out. I mean, they just uh -huh. said, like, we don't want it in our house, oh and, um, and so she came into care as a 14-year-old who had had no issues prior to that, um, but now she's in out-of-home care. She was in like 15 or 16 different placements for three years, um, mm -hmm. from between 14 and 17. And, mm -hmm. um, and in her last placement, she was in a shelter, and she had had a relationship with one, this other girl in the shelter, and so when the girl left, she, put, she had left one page of a love letter under her mattress, and the staff found it. So the staff thought that it was appropriate to read this letter to the other girls in the home. Um, mm. And so then when our kid got totally freaked out, they tried to have her arrested. Fortunately, the other girls were so mad at the staff that they, it was almost a riot. Um, mm. And what happened was her mentor um, got so mad that she called DCF and said, how do I make this, how do I become a foster parent? Um, and so the, this kid spent her whole senior year as a foster child in her mentor's home. Um, and now she's at college as a freshman. Wow. Uh, she made the dean's list last semester. Wow. Um, and interestingly, she went, spent a little bit of time over the holidays with her family, her, hmm. her bio family. Um, and I think that's an important factor because the research says that the number one predictor of outcome for kids is the response of their families. Mm -hmm. That when their families are supportive, they're at no higher risk than any other kid. When their families are rejecting, they're at higher risk for everything that you can possibly imagine. Um, but what the other thing that the research says is that if this is the, the risk factor for kids whose families are rejecting, and this is the risk factor for kids whose families are supportive, this is the risk factor for kids whose families are ambivalent. And so what that means is that families don't have to transform themselves to create enough space for their kids. They just have to move a little bit. And that's what's happening with her family, you know, that they, they're not transformed. Um, she is sort of genderqueer, and she's trying on different genders. Sometimes she identifies as a girl. Sometimes she identifies as a dude. And, um, and she sort of goes um, back and forth in how she presents. Um, and her family, they're most one of the biggest issues they have is that she sometimes presents as male. Um, and, um, and so she tones it down a little bit when she still dresses as she wants to, but she tones it down a little bit. And that's not a perfect solution, but it creates a space for them to be able to move right. a little bit forward. And, um, and that's an important thing, I think. Yeah, yeah. Um, so I think there's been a lot of success stories of kids that have really you know, worked stuff out. And I, I know I saw a little bit of that with my own family when I, mm -hmm. when I told them what was going on with me. My parents wanted to be supportive. Yeah. And they told me that. Mm -hmm. They wanted to be supportive. They weren't yet. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. But they wanted to because they, they loved to. you. Right. Yeah. And so they, so they, they really set themselves in a wait-and-see attitude. Mm -hmm. 
which, as you said, yeah. gave them the space to get to know me mm -hmm. and gave me the space to talk to them more openly mm -hmm. over time. Yeah. You know, and, and I, I joke that I started coming out to my parents in, two, in January 2004 and it's still happening. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it never yeah. quite ends. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But, um, you know, and, and they, they have come around. They're wonderful mm -hmm. supporters now. And mm -hmm. their, their biggest concerns ultimately were that I'd be safe and, yeah. and happy and successful. Yeah. And, yeah. Um, but, but it took them, I think, a little while to yeah. realize that's really what their concerns were. Right. And it was just, it was a blessing that they just said, all right, we love you. Mm -hmm. Let's see. Yeah, and that's great. And I mean, and I think that's a wonderful starting place for families. We love you. We're not sure about this. Yep. We don't really know, but we love you and let's wait and see. Let's take some time and figure this out. Um, and that that's something we can work with and that most families will move within a couple of years, yep. you know, off of at least intensely rejecting sure. to more um, at least ambivalent spaces. And we just have to be able to give them the time to do that. Um, I think a lot of times as a community, one of the things we've gotten been so hurt by families mm. that we reject them oh. too. And, uh, and that it's well, hard yeah. for us to find the room to let them have their process, right? You know, and we've we've talked about here. It's um, it's an interesting situation when 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 I want to come out to my family mm -hmm. and let them know what's going on and where I am and how mm -hmm. I'm going to be living my life. It's a very vulnerable moment, and yeah. I really want them to be there to support me. Mm -hmm. But it's also the moment when I have to be there to support them. Yeah, and it takes yeah. it takes a lot of energy right. to to be able to step well, yeah. back from your own needs and yeah. say. I need to support my family right. going through this right. <laughs> because they're dealing with something very, you know, gender, usually very shocking that I yeah. just told them. Yeah. You want to say? Well, I mean, there's an aspect of what you guys were both saying, I mm -hmm. think, too, where it's, it's um, one thing to come out to someone sitting here. Yeah. It's sometimes a little easier to come out to them from across the room. Right. I found it was a far easier to come out <laughs> from across the continent. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That yeah. was that was sort of enough space yeah. for me. But it, it it does play into that mm -hmm. rejection of of family. And I didn't reject my family. I love mm -hmm. them very much, mm -hmm. but. It was the Bible Belt, and right. that was the buckle of the Bible Belt, as you buckle, described. The buckle of the Bible, Bible Belt, belt and, and um, has it changed at all with any members of your family over time? You know what? I think it has. Um, for my father, it always just came down to I love my kids, and that's an end of it. Mm -hmm. um, but he recognizes now that I'm actually happy. Yeah. Every time he talks to me, yeah, and that and that makes a big difference, yeah, um, to him. And I found off, I found curiously that some of the most Christian of my mm -hmm. family were the most accepting, yeah. And they found their yeah. own that's so wonderful. their own yeah. sort of biblical mm -hmm. support for it, yeah, yeah. Which was, I mean, clearly rationalization because they love me. But most of the people who use do, you know, dogma as a religious um, perspective pick and choose right. because you know, that's what we do. <laughs> and, and, so, and so they were able to find an affirming way of looking at it. One of the things I've learned from doing this work is never assume how a family is going to respond. That, that the, the people that you think are going to be the most yes. rejecting are like, you know, right there, the people that you think are the most liberal and are going to be like wonderful in there are like <laughs> throwing their kids out on the street. I, I, you never know. I had that yeah. happen. A yeah. uh, situation happened to me in regards to that uh, this restaurant that I went to that mm -hmm. uh, the owner was friends with the family for many years. Uh, turned out just completely opposite. She wasn't in favor of it at all. Mm -hmm. uh, same way with my family. Mm -hmm. um, I had a hard time with that because yeah. um, how how I knew this is because my brother um, had gotten an earring one day mm -hmm. and um, he come home with it, and my mother had told him you either take that out or I'm going to rip it out of your ear when you're sleeping. Oh my so God. at that point, I knew mm -hmm. not to go any further with it.